So our next, our first talk of the session is going to be Hansa Krall, who is a Python programmer and Django developer. Uh, and he's going to be talking about how um, difficult or easy it is, I think, to do full text search. I hope easy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so hello, welcome. I hope you've enjoyed your lunch and enjoying the conference so far. Uh, and this is the topic of our of our presentation. What is this search that you that you speak of? I, I always wanted to do do this talk because uh, I get approached so many so many times by by people telling that search is hard and and they don't understand how how search how full text search works. Uh, the reason why I get approached is because I work for for Elastic. Uh, the company that is behind behind Elasticsearch, but don't don't worry. This is not going to be a sales pitch or anything like that. This is mostly uh, just a theory uh, of how what oh, uh, what full text search is and how it works. And we'll actually see that it's that it's quite easy. And I'll prove it to you hopefully uh, by implementing a very simple full text search in Python here live on stage because nothing ever went wrong with live demo, right? Uh, so, so that's the that's the plan for for this talk. So we'll also see how far how far we can get. Uh, so first, any good talk needs to start with some with some definitions, right? So what we're talking about is technically called an unstructured search, and just from the name you can see that it is it is not structured. And structured search is what you're typically used to from, from your other data stores, uh, from your SQLs and Mongos and, and other places, where the search is a set of constraints, a set of conditions, like this field needs to be greater than that, and, and this field mu must equal uh, this other value, etc. And that's, that is something that we call structured search, because it is very well structured, and it deals with the entire value of the field. Uh, so it literally says, give me some, something where location equals South Africa. Uh, as, simple, as simple as that. The unstructured search, as, as you, know, you, uh, you, might, uh, you might guess, has less structure. We are not looking for, uh, for a piece of data that, that classifies our scenario. Uh, we are looking for, uh, we're looking for content. We're looking for something that mentions South Africa or something that deals with the topic of Python. We're actually going inside uh, the value. Uh, so the classical example is you have, a, you have a bunch of books or a bunch of documentation and, and you want to see anything that's related to your, to your problem. So there are several different ways, to, different ways to do it that are better or worse. Typically, the first approach that people take is is the obvious one, right? I'm looking for I'm looking for web framework. I have some I have some issues. I have my collection of books somewhere in a dictionary uh, in a directory on my file system, and and I do this. I I I use grep. I hope all of you all of you know grep, and I say I I want this to be case insensitive because I don't know whether. Uh, what the author of that article uh, or document used. And I'm looking for web, then anything, and then framework. I'm essentially looking for a web framework, something that, that relates, to, uh, relates to that. However, as you might imagine, this is not the perfect solution for many, many, many reasons. Uh, first of all, there's a cursor in the middle. Uh, but that's not the biggest problem. The biggest problem is that this simply won't work if the web and framework are not on the same line. Uh, one line might end with web and, and then the other line might follow with framework. Also, because I use dot star, I have no control that it's web followed by framework. Also, if my, if my text is in some format, let's say, I don't know, HTML or Markdown or something super crazy, I might have some weird characters in between. I'm, uh, these might be again, on different lines, etc. So that's not ideal. So, you know, when we store data, typically the next step would be like, hey, let's, let's actually use, uh, use a database, right? And this is pretty much the equivalent of that. This is much simpler because we're just looking for one word. But the, the, the implementation is, is very much the same. 
this this where clause for for a uh, for a SQL select will literally go through all of your index through all of your fields, and it will literally try to match the word Python anywhere anywhere in there. Not even the word Python. It doesn't know anything about words. It will try to match the six bytes that you give it, b y and so on. So, again, several several issues. Uh, first of all, what happens if there is, for example, uh, somebody went completely crazy and, and have, some, have some HTML marks inside the word? Let's say they, they wanted to make the P bold or the PY bold, then this wouldn't work. Uh, also, it's terribly, terribly slow. It literally has to go through the entire, uh, entire data set, entire table. Uh, so this is very much a linear to the size of your size of your data set. And also, ultimately, what you get back from this is a, is a list of rows that matched, but in no particular order. You don't know which, which document matched uh, better than the others, which row really, really relates to Python and which one just you know mentions it in passing which means that it's not very not very interesting not very relevant is the keyword so those are all the problems that we are that we're trying to fix here those are all the things that we that we want to address so we want to build a system that will allow us to do all of this it will not force us to s literally read through all of the all of the data and uh, provide some sort of shortcuts and also some form of relevancy. So clearly this is not a new problem. We as humans, we've been writing things down for quite a while. And uh, after like the second week that we started to do this some, some few thousand years ago, uh, we immediately ran into a problem like how do we find what we have? So. Uh, that's, that's a problem that has been around for a long time. And it has also been solved a long, long time ago. Anybody cares to guess when this problem was first solved? That's, that's optimistic. <laughs> so no, unfortunately the answer is not when we invented fire. Uh, but it might as well been from, from where we stand. The, the, the first sort of instance of, of, this, of this problem as was documented and, and solved was in, in 1230, when some monks needed to actually find something in the Bible. I don't know why, but they want it. And uh, so they, they did something that was called the Bible Concordance in, in 1230 with some Dominican monks. So just to let, let, it, let it sink in. 1230, that's 800 years ago. And funnily enough, the solution that they came up with is the solution that we use today, still without pretty much any change. And um, I think you're all familiar with it, at least I sincerely, sincerely hope so, because to be familiar with it, all you had to ever do is, is you know, read a book. And, and at the end of the book, you would have something, something like this, an index. This is, by the way, also the origin of the word index that we use in other data stores as well. Uh, whenever we want to sort of short circuit the access to access to data, and and this is what it is. It's a list of a list of words, or not even words. It's some terms, and the list is alphabetical. And for each of the item, there is uh, there is a there is a list of pages. Where, where, that, where that term occurs. And again, that list is sorted. And that is super important because that actually allows us to do, uh, to do many, many things. First of all, it, it allows you to quickly look up what you want to do. But for that, it wouldn't necessarily have to be sorted. Uh, why, why it is sorted is, well, the terms themselves are sorted so you can actually find the term that you're looking for. Literally, it's, it's A to Z, so ho hopefully we, we all know our alphabet. So you, if you're looking for Python, you know that you should start at B and, and, then, and then find the Python. And then you get the, list of, you get the list of pages. And what happens if you're looking for two independent things? 
let's say I'm, I'm looking for, for Python and Monty. So all I have to do is look up those two terms in my, in my dictionary and I get the two list of pages. And regardless sort of how long the, those two lists are, I can, still, I can still identify, even as a human, I, you don't need a computer for that, to identify the pages that actually occur in both lists. And, and those are your results. That's, that's the, those are the pages that actually uh, mention Monty Python. So this is literally how search works to this very day. It's just, it's just a bunch of terms with, with a list of documents. And let's see how that works, shall we? So we're going to take some shortcuts, obviously, because we are, we are programmers and we are, and we are lazy, or at least I am. So this is, this is the initial scaffolding that we have. I have, I have two documents. Uh, this is documents for Django and for Python. I literally just took the first sentence off of the website for each of these. So it, if there is any, anything in there, I am not responsible. I just literally took the first, the first sentence. So I have two fields in my, in my documents. I have always a title and a description. I just have a function here to make things pretty so you can safely ignore that. That's not related to search. And I have two empty, two empty f uh, functions, index docs and search in an index for a query. And then again, a, a helper function to, to make things pretty. It doesn't do anything except print, print a bunch of stuff and it just calls the, it just calls the search. And what I want to be able to do is to call is to call the index docs, and and then do and do my query. So so let's let's start. So I need to I need to implement implement the index. So uh, what I need to do is uh, say what 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 is the index? What what should it be? We already know that it's some sorted sorted list of words, etc. But Let's be let's be a little lazy. We have Python. We we I called that thing a dictionary already. So let's just use let's just use dictionary, and actually let's just use uh, default dict. And for each of those uh, for each of those lists, I'm not going to use sorted lists because even though uh, merging two sorted lists is is fairly fairly easy, uh, the code doesn't look so doesn't look so nice. And we already again have a data structure in in Python that's very good at uh, merging those things. So we're just going to use a set for now, and and hopefully later we'll see how it would translate if we just use the uh, the sorted li uh, the sorted lists because sets are nice, but sets have one downside. They essentially have to all be all be in memory. But you can imagine if you have a long sorted list, it can literally live on disk. It can be billions, uh, billions of documents long, and you you would still be able to merge it quite effectively. Uh, but that's that's not what we're doing here. We are just trying to demonstrate a principle. So now I can safely start iterating th over my documents. And because we have a given set of documents for the IDs, we are just going to use the, the, the index in, in the list in the list of documents. Uh, and now we need to extract all the all the text from the from the document. So that should be also easy because it's a dictionary. So we just take we just take all the all the values. And now we need to now we need to get the list of the list of words. So again for word and Let's just do a split for now. Maybe, maybe later we can obviously come up with a with a with a better solution. And here in the index for the word, we just need to add the ID of the document. <coughs> so this should this should give us exactly exactly what we need. Uh, so for each for we are splitting things into words. And for each word, we have a set of documents where these uh, where these words occur. And so, how will how will the search work? Any guesses? Going once, 
going twice. Okay. So literally, I will just I will just return whatever's uh, whatever's in there. And hopefully this will work, because you know demos always work. Okay, it didn't find anything. Any any guesses of what we did wrong? Case sensitivity, exactly. So let's verify that. So let's try and search capital capital P. And now indeed for for Python with capital P, it does find both of our documents. So that's one thing that we need to uh, that we need to fix. Uh, so uh, how are we how are we gonna how are we gonna fix this? Wh where's where's the place where we need to fix this? Well, uh, well, there are actually there are actually two places where we need to fix this because we need to uh, both make sure. Essentially, what we need to uh, to make sure is that this part here will match that part there. And it's it's up to us how we how we do this. The easiest part is to is to lowercase pretty much everything. Uh, so we can uh, so we can do we can be super lazy. Yeah, it works. So this is this is the the core principle of of the search. Like if if you if you if you left right now, I would be fairly happy that that you you got the the core message uh, about uh, about search, and that's a, that's that's this part. It's about the normalization of the data, both occurrences of the data, the data in the document, but also the data in the query. Both need to be transformed into the same into the same shape and form so that they can actually they can actually meet and and that's and that's sort of crucial and that's honestly why where we're going to spend a lot more a lot more time now because we we now have we now have another problem what happens if i if i want to if i want to search uh for my for something let's say What happens if I want to search for programming language? Obviously, obviously, this approach will will no longer will no longer work because I'm just taking assuming the query is just is just one thing. So again, I need to be I need to be smarter. What I need to do is actually take it a step further. What I did before was was split the uh, the text of the document into words and index those words separately. So I need to do the same for my query. I need to split it into words, and then I need to look those words independently and then merge the results. Uh, the same process that I described earlier for looking up Monty Python in a book. It's literally, literally the same thing. Uh, but to make, it, to make it a little easier, we will, we will sort of extract, extract the logic out. So instead of just calling a split because uh, at some point, split also won't won't cut it because split just splits on new lines. But what happens, for example, if we have if we have some th something like this word wheel, but it ends with a dot, and and the dot will still will still be there if we just if we just split by white space. So we don't want to be just splitting at white space. We literally want to extract the words. Uh, so first. Uh, let's actually define a function to to tokenize uh, the the input. So what we can do there is, you know, if if you ha if you have a problem, just use regular expressions. So what what do we want to split on? Any any suggestions? Any guesses? Or did you just come here to sleep after lunch? I wouldn't blame you. <laughs> okay, that sounds good. So something like this? 
Okay. So we need to do something like So hopefully this will work. Okay, so we haven't broken anything. Our, our two naive examples with Python still work, but we still, we still cannot find the programming, uh, the programming language. Uh, so, let's, uh, so let's go in again. And what we need to do is do use the same, use the same thing here. And what we'll, what we'll look up is word dot lower. So so, but now we just need to we just need to combine these. So what we can actually do is again just use the power of Python, where we need to somehow combine these. And there is actually. we can use something like this. Return the intersection of all the, all the words, and that will literally give us, hopefully, all the documents that have both programming and language. So we, we have now successfully uh, found our Python. So let's do, let's do one, more, uh, one, more, one more thing, and that is introduce, introduce operators. So we can do we can do ends and we can do ors. So uh, let's search with an operator. By default, we'll use end. And all we need to do for that is say what are what are the different operators? What are the different things? So for end, we already know it's it's the intersection. So for or, what's it going to be? Any guesses? Union. Yes. And here, so theoretically, everything works just as it w did. And now we can actually search for, let's say, web language using or. Hmm, interesting. Okay, so so this so this now works. So um, hopefully hopefully I've be, I've been able to uh, to show you how how things how things work, and and that's all there is to it. This is literally how search how search works. So let's go through the individual uh, parts that we that we created here. So first, this is this is what our index ended up looking, and uh, we can we can make things much better. Because, as I, as I mentioned earlier, the topic is normalization. And you can already see that there are some things here that we could probably normalize even more, like programming. Probably we don't want to have the ING at the end because that's just a morphological noise. Programming or programmers or, or program or anything like that, that's literally the same word pretty much, just in a different shape or form. So we we might want to normalize it in the in the future as well. That process is called is called stemming to to find the stem of the word and only only put that into the inverted index. We could also have like in this case two different inverted indices for each uh, for each field, because we s we already know how to combine different sets, 
And we don't really care if those sets come from one index or different indices. Those are literally just the same sets. So all we, all we have to do is, is use the same combination methods, the set intersection and set union, uh, to, actually, to actually do that. And we'll see, we'll see how that works. Uh, this is my... Uh, this is the this is the index method. Uh, index method. This is this is a little bit further because we also added the different index index per field. But otherwise, this is pretty much what we created already. Uh, just go through all the go through all the fields that we want to index, analyze them, which means get the normalized list of words, and add them into into the inverted index. This is this is the process of of analysis. We didn't get as far, but that's, that's okay because we, we got the gist. In this case, we have one tokenizer. We always just have one tokenizer. And that several token filters, something that will modify the tokens once they're created. In this case, we have, we have lowercase and we have synonyms. So if we want to say that rapid is the same as quick, we can literally, whenever we see in the output of the tokenizer, we see word rapid, we can replace it with the word quick. And if we do the same for the queries, no matter if you search for rapid or if you search for quick, you will always find Django, which has the, the rapid development in its, in its description. So again, synonyms are super easy because there, nobody's saying that there needs to be an exact uh, relation between what's in the inverted index and what was there in the text to begin with. We're already lowercasing things and, and adjusting it in another way. Why not just replace it? Why not just add additional stuff? What we could do is index it both as rapid and as quick. And that way we would have even more flexibility in the index. And finally, this would be this would be our uh, this would be our search if we wanted to search across across the different across the different fields. You see that this is pretty much pretty much the same thing. We are just combining. And if we are searching across different across different fields, uh, all all that we are doing is again combining acr across the individual uh, in individual field indices. So for each word, we are essentially saying that it needs to be in one of these fields, and then overall, we 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 care to match uh, a document that has uh, either all of these fields or at least one of those. So this is this is super simple, and by the way, don't worry about it. There is a there is a there is a link at the end. So how does our implementation differ from the from the real world? In in our case, Apache Lucene. That's that's what I'm most familiar with. That's the low level library that powers both Solar and and Elasticsearch and does actually all of this all of this kind of work. So as I mentioned, the dictionary is, is not a dictionary as, as, as we used, uh, but it's actually a sorted list. So the lookup in the dictionary is literally a binary search, something that, that any, any student of, of computer science uh, will know after their first, first introduction into lists. And turns out it's actually good enough. Newest versions of Lucene have actually replaced it with something better, but that doesn't fit on a slide. So for now, let's pretend it's still binary search. Uh, instead, of, uh, instead of our sets, uh, we, have, we have lists for the posting list. I mentioned it sev several times. It's a sorted list. But there are also additional metadata in that list, and that's super important. For example, we need to keep track of how many times this word occurred in a given document because we want to be able to use that to calculate the relevancy. Also, we want to see on which positions that, uh, that word occurred in that, in that document, and we'll see uh, why in just a second. And obviously, I already mentioned this, instead of, instead of the unions and, and, and intersections, we, we, just have, we just have a simple, simple merge operation on the sorted lists. It's, it's not hard to implement, but it's definitely not pleasant watching someone do, someone do that. Not saying that watching me implement a set union was uh, enjoyable. So how would, how would more complex queries work? Like so far we only implemented the, the most simple one. So I'll show you just two examples or describe two examples. I'll paint you a word picture. So if we have a prefix search, I'm looking for a word that starts with PY. How would that work? 
Well, it's quite simple, right? As a, I already mentioned that as a dictionary, you have a sorted list. So all you have to do is, is start, find the first word that starts with PY and iterate through that until it starts with, with PZ or, or moves on to, uh, to another beginning letter. And what, what you get as the output is, again, multiple posting lists, multiple sorted lists that, again, you have to merge. So it's the same principles all over again. And, and that's, how we do, that's how we do everything, including something even more complex, like literally looking for a phrase, Monty Python. So think of what that, what that means, is I'm looking for a document that contains both Monty and Python, but also the word uh, Monty needs to be followed by the word Python. And that's why I mentioned just a, just a second ago that the posting list also contains the positions of the words in the document. So while I'm doing the merging of my two posting lists, all I have to do is say, hey, these two, these two posting lists, th their positions needs to be off by one. Or possibly I can, I can say I want to Monty within five words of Python. And that would again be a fairly simple query. It's just an additional if for the, for the merge. And that's literally how we do, how we do everything. So if, if you're interested a little bit more, uh, the, the code that we, just, that we just created is available on, on Bitly. It's on my, it's on my gist. Uh, in, that, in that code, we, uh, I went a little further. I implemented the different indices per field and also a, a super basic uh, scoring uh, using just, uh, just the number of occurrences of that word in the document. So hopefully I've, I've, I've been able to impart on you the, the importance of, of, the, of the individual process and their significance. If you, if you walk away with nothing uh, but knowing that there is some analysis process that normalizes the query and, and the text onto the same thing, I would be absolutely delighted. If you also understand how that relates to all of the, all of the magic behind full text, like how we can go from running to run, then my work here is done. So if you have any, any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Thanks. Thank you. We have some time for a few, speak, uh, for a few uh, questions. Um, and I think we've got somebody with a microphone at the back. So any questions for Hansa? Sorry. Um as, as, so I'm not a hardcore developer like you guys. I'm more on the engineering side, so this might be a bit stupid, but... Um, no such thing. So one of the things you mentioned is uh, sometimes you have uh, li like the stemming of the words, right? And, and you have like ing at the back, back of something. Um, and, and you want to filter that out, but then so some words like, for instance, bing might get confused and then you end up just with the letter B potentially. I'm not saying, you know, but... Um, I find that sometimes, uh, well, I did some, some searching, uh, especially for reporting uh, on the engineering side, and then I get confused, you know, uh, when I try and write that code, and I have to have exception lists and all kinds of things. How do you handle that um, in a so more, you know, principle kind of way? Absolutely. So there are several different ways. Uh, obviously, the most naive, and what you will actually find on this link is, is literally if you find ing or ly at the end, just remove it. That obviously doesn't work for ping and bing and all, all of those words. Uh, so uh, there is actually a real algorithm uh, called Snowball Stemmer that is a, a, a little bit, little bit uh, smarter because it, it is still based on rules like these, but it also has like different exceptions. For example, if the word is less than one letter at the end, don't do it, etc which will take care of the bing. But ultimately you want uh, if you know if you really care about your search, you want to use uh, uh, something that we call a dictionary-based stemmer. So you take a dictionary, something like Huntspell, uh, that, that is part of Chrome or OpenOffice or something like that. It's freely available. You feed it into, uh, into, into Lucene, and then it will literally look up uh, the word in that dictionary, the same dictionary that, that your browser uses for, for spelling corrections. So it already knows all the different variants of the, of the name of the word and where it came from. 
And, and beyond that, there are many, many smarter and smarter ways to do it. it, it it's a never-ending process if you want to improve it. Because then you have then you have irregular verbs that that you might want to that you might want to uh, normalize, etc. So it's it's a very it's a very hard problem. Ninety ninety percent there is just use the snowball an analyzer that actually ships with Lucene and Elasticsearch and Solar, all of those. If you want to go one step beyond, use the dictionary-based one. If you want to go further, get a PhD. <laughs> <laughs> no shortcuts there. Okay. Uh, in that example that you've given, could you show how we would manage context for words? For example, if I was searching for Python snakes versus how I would search for Python programming languages. Um, yeah. Yeah, so what, what, you, what you could do is we could enhance this and, and say, well, Python programming is is easy. That that's that's literally that's literally that's literally this query, where you want Pyth uh, programming and Python. If you wanted to uh, be f about snakes, you could either do snakes Python, or you could actually say uh, Python and not programming. Again, it's a, it's a very simp very simple operation. Uh, both with the sets and with the sorted lists to to just use. Uh, to just use a, 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 a subtraction instead of instead of union or intersection, uh, so it's it's just it's just operations on those sorted lists. So that's how that's how you would do something like that. Okay. Uh, when normalizing your data, um, you had the example of rapid and quick. Which could, which could technically be normalized into either one of those, and you could even add a few more words. Would those words build up in your dictionary as a singleton word, as a singleton stemmed word, and then expand? Um, or how would you deal with something like that? Uh, so that's, that's really more up to you. Like in, th in, in, this, in this example, we are replacing the word rapid with the word quick. But we could just as well have indexed both of them. Uh, so even though in the text it's just rapid, in the index you will have both rapid and quick. So it depends on the flexibility because we need to do something similar to the query. So uh, typically if you, if you use the other approach, if you would in index it as both rapid and quick, which is super easy, you just do two yields here, uh, then you wouldn't do that part for the query. You would leave the query as is because you already have all the different options in, in the index. Or you could do it the other way around. Do it for the query, but don't do it on the index. That's actually the better approach because at that point you're doing it at query time, so you can change your synonyms dynamically. This happens at index time. All of this happens at index time. So if you want to change it, you need to re-index all of your data. That's expensive. So. Uh, you you might want to do the synonyms at at uh, at search time, but there are, there are many different many different options, each suited uh, better for different use case. Cool. Do we have time for one more question? Over there in the back. Um, I heard you say that uh, basically the idea is to apply the same analysis process to the query and to the index, right? Uh, but why then in Elasticsearch um, you have the option to make it different, to do a, like a particular analysis process on query and one particular in... For index. example, what I just mentioned with the synonyms, where you might want to do the synonyms for the query but not for the index. That would be one, one example where the analy uh, analyzers would be different. Uh, so that that's 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 one uh, that's one case. Uh, the other case might be where where your analyzer does something fairly uh, fairly elaborate. Let's say that you have an analyzer that will index every single prefix of a word. So you have a ten-letter word, and it will index the first two letters, the first three letters, the first four letters, etc. And then, as the search, you just get the f you just get five letters. You don't need to again split it into two, three, four, and five. You just want to look up the five words, the uh, five letters. So, so you take the, the query as is, but you analyze uh, you analyze the uh, the uh, input. 
So there are many different, many different ways. And again, all you have to do, uh, if, if you're faced with a question like that, all you have to do is visualize what happens under the hood. What, what is actually in the dictionary and how to, how to get your input, your query input to match whatever's in there. And those are the two only questions that you need to concern yourself with to get a good, good search quality. Those are the questions that you need to answer. And there are, there are tools to, to make it happen. For example, Elasticsearch has an Analyze API, which essentially uh, lets you do a, a dry run. You just send it the text, and it will return to you the tokens that it would index or search for. So you can literally see what's, what's going on under the hood and, and reason about it. Make sense? Makes sense. Thanks. Cool. So I guess we have time for one more burning question, if there is one. Uh oh. <laughs> From this example, if you wanted to implement something like term frequency at a crappy ish level, so for instance, if you were to deal with a biological data set and someone was referring to the genetic programming of snakes that evolved in X, what is the approach that you would take? So here in my, in my stupid example, I, I just switch from, uh, from using, uh, from using a, a set to using a, a counter. Uh, a Python, uh, a, a Python counter. So for each of the for each of the word, and each of the document, I count how many how many times it was it was it was present. And and then I just need to change the combine. This is what I, this is what I meant when I said that the merging is 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 not hard, but it's definitely not pretty to look at. And this is literally just just merging the counters. And then actually, th uh, the, uh, what I what I output uh, at the end is the counter has a super super nice method called most common, and that will automatically give me the the most common documents that I found in my in my counters that I encountered for each of the individual words. So so this this is where the example ends on on the URL that that I that I sent you. And so you can actually see how, how that would work. It's very naive. It only takes into account the term frequency, not the inverse document frequency. But it would be actually fairly easy to add it there. It would just involve more math. OK. OK, thank you very much for having me. And if you have any further questions, you can find me around. <laughs>